You know, Google has always had a, they've had a way about announcing new products. Mm. They've really got, they've really done it their own way. Well, yeah, it's, I remember that one, I don't even remember which device it was, but it was one event where they were just goofing on themselves for essentially all the information coming out about the phone prior to the phone coming out. Mm Mm-hmm. I kind of, I mean, obviously there's this side of it, which is you kind of spoil the excitement. But on the other side of it, it's so much hype out there that there's something refreshing about them just being like, yeah, oh yeah, we're doing that. Yeah, here it is. Anyway, today is a new, another version of that. There were rumors that due to chip shortages that the the Pixel 5a might be canceled. Hmm completely and in the wake of those rumors which i guess we're picking up steam that okay they're going to cancel this phone google decided to reply officially and say no no no, we're doing that phone Mm. we'd like to officially announce that phone which is the pixel 5a oh okay and not only that they said they're gonna we're gonna do another phone too pixel 6 i guess people are right assuming now for those that don't follow the Pixel stuff too closely, 5A would just be the new version of the 4A, which is a a fairly, uh, from what I can tell, a a fairly popular device as far as Pixels go. And the reason I say that is because I had been moving moving around the Amazon bestseller page for unlocked smartphones in the US, and the 4A, it was up there. It was up there amongst the, just a variety of refurbished iPhones. So it was one of the top sellers. And I just, there's something about this budget move, like the more affordable Pixel phone, not the, not trying to be a flagship at all, but just trying to be a value. Mm -hmm. That's what the A series is all about. Something about it I like. Anyway, so they have confirmed that there will be a 5A 5G. The Pixel 5a 5G is not canceled. It will be available later this year in the U.S. and Japan and announced in line with when last year's A-series phone was introduced. I don't see Canada in there. I'm getting concerned here, Will. Mm. Yeah, we should talk to our reps. Yeah, we better start talking to some people. I'm yeah. sure that they can get us get us one, and uh, maybe they didn't list all the countries there, or maybe they were including Canada in the U.S. component. I don't know. Um, as far as rumors about the device itself, it is expected to be similar in size to the 4A 5G, 6.2 inch display FHD plus dual rear cameras and a headphone jack, which is another thing that's important on the budget, budget lineup. And, uh, this, if, if you take into consideration what Amazon is showing you on that bestseller list, you, you, you begin to realize how important the A series can be for Google in combating people just buying refurbished old iPhones because, and and then ultimately getting Android into the hands of individuals who might get themselves locked up in the alternative platform. Mm -hmm. I presume that all of this information is something that is considered by Google. and, And that's why the cancellation of the A series, even due to chip shortages would, would be, Bad for Google. Mm-hmm. Bad news. Um, I mean, you can maybe even make an argument that the A series is more of an opportunity for Google than the than the Pixel Six. You can make the argument. I'm not, I'm not saying that for myself. My interest would live more in 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 the Six, but nevertheless, are these unboxing videos on Amazon? Oh yeah, from an it's Amazon a- influencer. Look at this guy. <laughs> Digital David. That's a, amazing. Look at that. 25 minutes. The set looks a lot like the old Unbox Therapy set. I mean. Yeah, no kidding, eh? Wide angle lens. Check. Gradient uh, in the background. Check. White table. Check. I mean, it's not really that many things. If you think about yeah, it. Pretty simple right. setup. <laughs> Are you offended? No, no, no not at oh, all. Okay. I'm just, I'm actually more interested it. in the Amazon influencer space and the uploads that are that are native here on Amazon in the player. Mm. Like I also see 
uh, Mr. Mobile over there. Oh, yeah. So there's some people they're they're uploading here as well as on YouTube, even those who do upload on YouTube. Anyway, that's a sidetrack. So people were were speculating. I guess this is good news. Google has a history of kind of stumbling into these announcements. Hmm. But I have to say I'm I'm glad that the device is not getting canceled because um I think interesting stuff is happening at that at that price point, at the entry level price, assuming that they can maintain it around three hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah, cheaper alternative with uh, good software support. Yeah, I like there's something I, I like to see the big brand name, the big well known brand name. What is the budget offering? Because mm -hmm. it doesn't always happen. Mm -hmm. And so, and like letting people into the brand, making the brand itself more approachable. Like I, I felt the same way when Apple did their uh, SE model. Yep. And the same goes for every single brand that offers something like that up. Mm -hmm. Um. It's kind of what I wish happened with OnePlus in retrospect, as opposed to doing a whole new line with the Nord, which makes it feel like some other thing. I wish it was just a OnePlus SE or a OnePlus 9A, let's say, mm -hmm. kind of thing. I know they did. I think they did an R in India. Was it R? Is that the letter they put on it? Is it Nord? No, 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 no. OnePlus hard. 9. Like when they did the OnePlus 9 launch, we, we got the 9 and the 9 Pro. And then oh, right. yeah. there was this uh, 9R for certain markets to get that price down. Anyway, nonetheless, it's not the same phone. It's important to note. Mm -hmm. So may, maybe some people disagree with me. Maybe, maybe there is a merit to having a different brand name so you know what you're buying and you're less... Because some people might think, oh, uh, I'm being deceived here into thinking it's a, you know, that the letter is not enough of an indicator. Mm. But I think you do it a couple generations and it starts to, yeah, you start, people start to become familiar with the fact that how, how you're using the letter. So they can use R, Google can have A, Apple can have S, E, or Mini. No, because Mini, Mini wasn't a cheap phone, it was 700 oh. bucks. Oh, right. I'm saying for the budget lineup. Yeah. Anyway, uh, this next one. How about this next one? Samsung, they did something. If uh, if you and I were from the UK, we would say that they did something cheeky. You ever heard that before? Yeah. Yeah, that's what we would say. Yeah. We can't say that because that's not... Uh, what would be the Canadian equivalent? That's actually, it's a great point you make because I hear that word on the British front all the time. Yeah. All the time. Like a very important term. And I'm not sure that there is a North American equivalent to the way cheeky is used in the UK. Hmm. Yeah. I can't think uh, uh, endearing or amu uh, tip, uh, impudent or irreverent, typically in an endearing or amusing way. I mean, similar to look at these words. You don't use any of these words, and and they're and they're not good enough. Like, imagine you said presumptuous. Like, that's not uh. really what you mean. You mean it in a cuter way. Yeah. Pert. Anyway, I never use pert. The important part here is that Samsung did something. They. Uh, came up with a browser-based Galaxy test drive. And I saw the press relief release in my inbox. Apparently, this was a courtesy of Samsung in New Zealand. This is their project. Hmm. And uh, basically what happens, you go to a particular web page on your iPhone. It has to be on an iPhone. It cannot be on an Android device. Hmm. It will just say, you're already on Android. What's the matter with you? And what will happen is you'll create this little shortcut on your desktop which is essentially just pinning the website, which will then open you into Galaxy Land and you can experience all the things you would be experiencing if you ponied up and bought a hmm. Galaxy device instead of your iPhone. So you can test drive and there's little kind of knickknacks and, and, and Easter eggs in there. Huh. So for example, when you go into the camera app, there is an influencer, Logan Dodds. I'm not familiar with Logan Dodds, but uh, he's in there and kind of explaining different features inside the camera app but it feels like a native experience because you're tapping around as if your phone just turned into a huh. 
Interesting. Galaxy device and it's on your iPhone. And it's skinned up like this? I believe you I believe you can go in there and mod the appearance of it just like oh. you would on a on a Galaxy device. Um here's the other thing, the other cheeky aspect of it. Do you know what they called it? Yeah, what's that? They called the experience the where is it? The eye test. The eye test. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> eye test. I guess you a, can't. A play on iPhone, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. You so in order to use the browser, you all the browser is going to bring up is this QR code, and then you still need an iPhone to scan right. the QR, which would then bring you to the eye test. Like not I E Y E people. Um, it's the letter I. Sure. Yeah. Like iPhone. Yeah. And capital T. What do you think about this, Will? Is this brilliant marketing? Is this uh, cheeky in a good way or cheeky in a bad way? I think it's cheeky in a good way. Will he yeah. do? Will he do? It's a little fun thing that people can do. It doesn't harm anyone. Will he do? Yeah. So not shots fired? Uh, well, I mean, if you want to think deeply into it, probably. What if Apple did it in reverse? It might be received differently. Yeah. It was called eye test and, he, and and they were encouraging people on Android to try out iPhone and it might be received differently. Yeah. I don't know. It's uh I seen a couple of clips of it. It seems it seems interesting. Pretty cool. Hmm. Innovative marketing. Speaking about Samsung, they have apparently made a deal with LG to purchase a boatload of OLED panels. Oh. Which might be a surprise to you. You sit there say, wait a sec, you're Samsung. Yeah. On a smartphone, you guys can't stop making OLED panels. Uh huh. Let me tell you something, Will. It's hard to make these panels. You got to grow them. When you got the really big ones, like the one we have over there, mm -hmm. which the people can't even enjoy right now. Yeah, this one. 88 inches? Yeah. Incredibly more difficult to make than the small because you have more likelihood of imperfections and things sure. like this. So they have the yield rate is much lower. They toss out a lot more. It's harder to do. Samsung was trying to do it at the large scale a while ago, and then they kind of gave up on that. Hmm. And they tried to promote and sell other technologies. You heard about the QLED stuff and things like yep. this. And you want to know something, Will? I looked at all of it. I looked at all of it. And I am not surprised they want to cut a deal with LG because LG does does it well. And I, up until this point, especially on the TV, I have yet to find a technology that is able to deliver in a way that OLED is able to deliver. Hmm. I have not seen it. And so as the Samsung sits around and figures out if they want to actually manufacture them on their own at some point, in the meantime, the customer is gravitating towards these panels. In fact, LG already sells panels to all kinds of brands. You know LG, they sell they sell panels to Sony. Right. They sell panels to Vizio. The, Samsung come knocking, they're like, "Yo, we'll sell you a panel." They're in the panel business. Let me let me just give you an idea of scale here. Officials reportedly met recently to agree to the deal, which would see 1 million panels supplied to Samsung in the second half of this year, rising to 4 million panels next year. That ain't nothing. Mm -hmm. Millions of panels. So anyway, keep, it, uh, keep your eyes peeled because you're going to be seeing some Samsung products come on the market, packing LG You're going to see Samsung TVs packing LG panels. Oh, there's going to be weird. millions of them coming up really soon. And who knows how they're going to market it or what the difference is or what kind of features that they put in there. Um, but I don't mind this kind of stuff. Cooperation. Yeah, I'm not one of these people that is out there getting upset that these, in, that these companies interact like this. Like I don't, you know, the whole fandom around one versus the other. Like, we just yeah. like the idea of this combat. Like, everybody's got a boxing match coming up. You just want, it's just, it's, in a way, it's attractive to imagine everything as head to head versus mode. Mm -hmm. But in reality, there's so much stuff on top of other stuff. In reality, it's uh, nothing is in a vacuum in this, in this industry. Yeah. Whether it's the display that's in the iPhone or the communications components or the chipset or, uh, 
blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Clearly, but, they figured out that OLED was superior. It's like, let's try to make it, let's work it out. OLED's nice. Yeah. Here's a report. U.S. teens turn their back on Android and love iPhones more than ever. Really? Yeah. Speaking of uh, combat, now people are... Don't do that in the comments section. Mm -hmm. It just means Apple's doing a good job. A good job of remaining in a power position. A good job of marketing. A good job of creating products that appeal to that group of people. And let me tell you why that group of people is important, Will. You want to know what happens with a teenager? What? They grow up. Okay. A teenager grows up. Yeah. They get a job. They get some money. They they sure. Yeah. Then they're, they're not likely to really feel like they want to switch platforms later on. Whoever gets that entry point, whoever's the first smartphone, could be the smartphone for life. Yeah. Whichever that's the platform. Entry point, exactly. You know, and then build the ecosystem from there. Who doesn't want a customer for life? Yeah. We don't even have customers for life. Yeah. You know, view, view, the things that you view and like, it changes. Everything's a la carte. Shout out to, shout out to those that have been watching for years. Yeah. Shout out to those that have been watching for years. You know, in our business, you got to, uh, it's not like we have a piece of software that's proprietary. We can't lock you in. Mm -hmm. You know, we can evolve. Of we, course. We can do this show. Mm -hmm. We can have a breadth to the topics that we cover. Mm -hmm. But we, we, we can't lock you into iMessage. Yeah, that's not ours. There's one company that can do it. Uh huh. And we talked in the past about how important that messaging app is to these youngsters at that high school level. Mm -hmm. And how they don't want to feel cast out with a different color bubble. And you know, you know the consideration goes into the bubble color. Of course, yeah. We talked about people feeling excluded. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. Just one in every 10 American teens uses Android. Or an, all, an iPhone alternative phone. Just one in 10. That's crazy. So you got, so you're this one teenager with the green bubble out of 10. Yeah. And they're like, why you got that? What are you doing, man? <laughs> Calling them out. This data comes from a semi-annual survey conducted in the U.S. polling 7,000 teens across 47 states with an average age of just over 16. 88% of these teens say they own an iPhone, while further 90% believe an iPhone will be their next smartphone. It's 90%, Will. And it's, a, it's an all-time high. It only keeps on ramping up. You know? Did they say which iPhone? No, they didn't. And this explains the fact that we talked about cost. We talked about those popular devices on Amazon. We talked about refurbished devices, the iPhone SE, unexpected popularity. So it seems to me that this group, and this is my speculation, it seems to me this group doesn't care which iPhone it is. They just need to have an iPhone. Mm. And they'll take a subpar old iPhone over even possibly a nicer, more recent Android device because they got to be a part of the whole thing. Mm. And or because Apple has done such an amazing job of, remaining in the spotlight and delivering whatever it is that that group is looking for. Mm -hmm. Series of applications and things like this. All time high. Now keep in mind, this is US only figures and they didn't poll every single person. They did try to distribute across the states. I mean, it's a poll. You can't poll every single person. <clears throat> but this would not be reflected globally, obviously. Yeah. As we're all aware. But if you're curious as to what the marketplace is like here in North America, this is some evidence for you. Uh, now, speaking of uh, upcoming devices, it looks like iPad and MacBook production might be delayed due to that global uh, chip shortage that we had talked about previously. And, and there's some speculation that the reason we haven't seen an event or that events uh, may, may be delayed is because products might not be ready to go mm. because of the chip shortage. Now, Apparently, on the iPhone side, they've been able to avoid disruption due to these shortages. But according to this new report, they have not been able to avoid these shortages when it comes to iPad and MacBooks. So 
that could be why those early rumors of an event taking place, I think there were like two different stages, two different dates, and, and then ne- none of them happened, and then they just announced the WWDC, and there could be some level of involvement here. Here's a quote. Production plans for Apple's iconic iPhones have so far not been affected by the supply shortage, although the supply of some components for the devices is quite tight, according to two sources. So they're saying, hey, it could touch those products too in a moment. Overall, the component shortage remains a supply chain issue for Apple and has not yet had an impact on product availability for consumers. So what does this mean to you, the buyer? Probably not much, other than you may have to wait a little longer for those next models. Mm. You would probably be okay if you're picking up, but I don't know. I think people are sort of avoiding iPads right now specifically because there's there's, uh, most of the speculation is pointing at new ones relatively soon. Mm Mm-hmm. Speaking of those new ones, next article gives us a look at a dummy unit of an upcoming iPad mini. And I mean, the kind of disappointing part here is that it doesn't seem new at all. It's not like any of those renders that people are showing off. It's not an iPad mini pro. It looks exactly like the old iPad mini. Yeah. Which is disheartening, to be honest. How long can they keep selling that thing? But same time, we just talked about the success that they had with the iPhone SE. Mm -hmm. If that dummy is real and then that's the next iPad mini, and if it has the right price, people might still gravitate towards it. Mm -hmm. People may prefer a lower price and an old form factor, Mm -hmm. but it certainly looks antiquated next to those iPad Pros, especially on the front side with the giant chin and forehead. And I never really liked how that device had, it was so asymmetrical with the slimmer bezels on the side. And then right. it's just a weird, uh, it would be nice to see just a modern take. Now, I'm not saying that this for sure is going to be the thing, but this is your typical series of events leading up to a new product. Oh, look at that. There's the mm-hmm. dummy. There's the dummy unit. Um. The surprise here is that there's been other reports that Apple is working on a major redesign for the Mini, featuring a larger 8.4-inch display Hmm. to modernize the iPad Mini so it fits in with the rest of the lineup. Anyway, these come from uh, Sonny Dixon, and I don't know, was was he talking about maybe sending us one of those? I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll take a look at it. Yeah, we'll check it out. Maybe we'll take a look at it, but I don't know what the point is if it looks... If you handle the thing, I could just go buy an iPad mini. Right. I don't know what's really different about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sure the specs would be different internally. But as far as looking at a dummy unit, what are you going to really show off if it's the same thing that it was? Mm-hmm. All right. This next one is a buyer beware. Uh, we have some counterfeit AirPods 3 that show up in video here. And the product doesn't even exist yet. So you should... You should tell Sonny Dixon to grab these real quick. <laughs> uh, this popped up on social media, I believe, the user, Duan Rui on Twitter. Uh, this was a video originally posted on TikTok showing off AirPods 3 or counterfeit AirPods 3. And look, they got that new design going on. It's crazy. Now you wonder, is this r- the real thing? Oh, by the way, I'm having a, a China memories right now seeing that lazy Susan in the middle there. <laughs> hey, look at the restaurant, man. It's just peeking out. Yeah, look at her, look at a watermelon. You just spin it around. You take your, you know. Oh, does he have a plate of food right there? Oh, he does. He has a plate of food. He just. <laughs> you don't want to drop it in there. Jeez, it's very close to the plate of food right there. Anyway, are these counterfeits made based on the leaked schematics drawings, or does does this company have access to the actual? unit and or at least one model of it and they've been able to replicate it i don't know i would be very curious to check this out but i guess it's beware in the meantime because in the past when it comes to these counterfeit products they they tend to not be very good and so if you pay even if you pay 50 to 100 dollars for them they might be trash Mm -hmm. you just don't know you don't have the track record there but uh, this is the rumored design change for the for the next AirPods to have a more uh, in ear type of fit somewhere between the current AirPods and the Pro, 
and to have a shorter stem and a smaller case. So that that might be the closest physical manifestation of the of the thing that we've seen, mm-hmm. even though it's a counterfeit. Now, since we're talking about AirPods, this next one, you're going to like this, Will. Mm. <laughs> yes. Tiny <laughs> AirPods washing machine looks this cute is, as can be. This is very funny to me. <laughs> this is a Kickstarter. Oh, okay. Have you seen this or no? No, I haven't. Yeah, this is a Kickstarter, and it, it actually, like a real washing machine that you will put clothing in. There's like the spinner. There's the spinner in the middle. It's obviously much tinier than a clothing washing machine. There's a little spinner inside there, and you you drop the uh, AirPods in. Although, I, I do they have to be AirPods? Or could you just drop any? I don't know. It's made for AirPods. You close the lid. It's a top load. It's called the Cardlax earbuds washer. Oh, no, they're calling it an earbuds washer. So presumably you could stick whatever you want in there. Oh, okay. And it's not a joke. It's a real thing. It will spin them around. Listen to this. Open the top of the Cardlax to expose a rotating soft brush used to get the gunk out of the hard-to-reach places in your AirPods. Then drop the earbuds into the barrel where a spinning cylindrical makeup sponge will polish them. Oh. You see, this is how you start. You start with a brush. You spray the oh, inside. It has like a mini uh, fluid. Thing. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Because you're going to still stick them that's back like in your... your detergent. <laughs> yeah, except you're going to stick it back in your ear, so it's going to be like a, some sort of safe. Right. Yeah. It's not like a full full wash. No, no, no. no, no rinse no. cycle. No, 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 no. And they move around. You pop it open, and look at these babies. From that to that. I think we need this for the studio. <laughs> I'm not even lying because you try out these earbuds and if you got to take, if you got to try out the earbud and then, and then all of a sudden Mo is taking some sort of video shots and yeah, <laughs> macro, macro close ups, and you just pop it in here and tidies it right up. And this is, I mean, there's so uh, many, there's so many AirPods out in the world. They figured there's actually a market for this thing. They say it's compatible with 99% of other earbuds too, which I like that. Universal. Yeah. But they're obviously going to go with the most high profile pair to market the product, but you could shove whatever you want in there. That's very funny. Now, this is available on Kickstarter, and I'm going to get you to guess the price right now. Um, 70 bucks. $33. Oh, wow. Wow. That's uh, surprising. You, I, I, when I saw the thirty three, I was like, I feel like they could have charged more for that. Yeah, because if you got AirPods, you already spent two hundred. It's got motors in there, you know. But somehow they got to thirty three. Now that is UV the uh, that is the early bird. It'll go up to thirty nine. Oh, okay. And the product uh, is going to ship June twenty twenty one. But there you have it, a whole new category of products. Hmm. Uh, oh, this next one is weird. I'll get your take on this. I had to give a shout out. This came to me via Twitter. Uh, a fan actually sent it to me. Oh God, I forget the username though. Oh, I'll. Uh, it's not this. No, no, no. Uh, this is just a Reddit post. Uh, 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 somebody on Twitter just sent me this. This tweet saying, "Hey Lou, did you notice that Apple took down?" the commercials relating to durability. Hmm. So I can't watch this? No, no, no. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh. You're getting ahead of yourself here, Will. Okay. Well, you're I all, had to click. You're all ramped up today. You know <laughs> that? You took a few days off, and now you're ramped right up. Yeah. I'm like Otis. Like, your energy level right now at 5.30 p.m. is one of the best I've ever seen, actually, at this time. Well, I'm doing my best, you know. I just want to know the what, what your secret is. Did you get a good sleep or something? Uh, well, I got some chips over here. They kind of charged me up some sodium. Potato and sodium. The secret, the secret for Willie Do is a potato, some, some fried potato. Yeah. Just give me some of that. I'm charged up. All right. Well, that's easy. Anyway, so I get this tweet and I go do what anybody would do. I go to the YouTube page. Apple's YouTube page because they have a lot of ads they put up there and mm. some huge view counts on these ads. Oh. 
Exactly. Anyway, just click on it. Click there. Click there. On click. on a yeah. Okay. Right there on the on the page, and you'll see right away you've got their ad from three weeks ago, which was the jump ad for the AirPods Pro. But where's the cooking one? Hang on, hang on. You still you go a little further. You see iPhone 12 related commercials. You see AirPods Max commercial, two of them. Uh, you got an iPad Air commercial, like whatever. The I mean, the, look at the iPhone 12 Pro, 17 million or 22 million behind the Mac on that commercial up there. This is 20 million. Yeah, so they they run these commercials, right? Uh huh. They run these commercials, oh, sir. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, two of the most kind of what would you call them? When they when they came out, those two ads, the durability ads. So this is this one called Fumble, and the other one with the chef. You do you remember what I said on this show right here? No. What did you say? <laughs> well, you're on it. You know. <laughs> well, well, I can't remember. Everything what I said on this say. show right here is I was like, I can't believe the lawyers let it fly. And I was talking about how specific it was. By the way, look at the facial oh. expression. Jeez, well. Yeah, bad timing. I said, Sorry. I can't I can't believe that the, they let it fly. And then I was like, oh, look at the specifics in the commercial. Like, she's fumbling with the phone on the sidewalk, but then eventually it drops in dirt. And then it's like, relax. It's iPhone. Ceramic shield. And it was the same thing with the dude who was washing his phone in the sink and making a mess, the chef guy. Mm -hmm. Same thing. So I put that out, out there. Just, just out of curiosity, I was just like, hmm, I'm surprised they're going down this route because I could imagine that individuals who would break their things would call up Apple and say, look at your commercial. You're, you're encouraging me. You're, you're, when, you, when, when I go buy the thing, the message I'm getting is that this can deal with getting banged up. And mm -hmm. we all know it's not really the case. It's definitely more durable than it's been in the past, but it's not the type of thing you want to be chucking in the sink. Yeah, it's not bulletproof. And then, so this guy tweets me and I go looking for it. I don't find it. And then I got to Google it. And then I got to go to Reddit the last time it was embedded and then click through in the same way that you just did in order to find out that the video is unlisted. So Apple did not remove these commercials, but they unlisted them. Mm -hmm. And it's both of them, both of the durability related commercials unlisted at the same time i guess you can't search for them no they will not show up on youtube search they will not be in suggestions they will not be on the channel page the only way to get to these commercials now is through places it's been previously embedded and that's why the person who tweeted me couldn't find it oh couldn't find it he said where did it go off the chat off apple's channel page i guess they went to go watch it probably watching an old episode of lou later when we first mentioned it hmm. so there's a couple reasons that this could be the case Obviously, conspiratorial types will say they came around or they got complaints or people started or they started to worry or the lawyers uh, changed their stance on it. Like, that's the fun explanation. It's also possible that they just didn't do that well. Like, one thing, how, what's the view count on that? Uh, just under a mil. 900,000. Now, their latest AirPods ad is 9 million. Uh, those iPhone ads were 20 million. Maybe the reception wasn't what they wanted and they went and unlisted it. Maybe they often unlist ads. I mean, who's even paying attention? M maybe this is part of their process that after they feel it served a purpose, maybe they use it for market research. Maybe they want to gauge the response before determining if it's going to live on the channel page forever. There's right. a lot of potential reasons for this thing. I'm not claiming to know the reason for this thing, but I just, I thought it, it was a curious finding. Mm -hmm. What do you think the reason is? Uh, I would think that they're just experimental with their YouTube channel and just taking things out, moving things around. And uh, yeah, I don't think it's some sort of crazy marketing strategy. So you don't, you don't, you don't think that they had second thoughts about showing the iPhone getting beat Maybe. up so much? Maybe. I, I'm not discounting that. But I try to err on the side of. We'll have to keep an eye on it. Experimenting. We'll have to keep an eye on it and see if in the future, if other ads go unlisted and it's like a frequent right. process. Because the two that happened to go down were around this exact same ceramic shield thing, this this exact same durability thing. Relax, it's iPhone. Hmm. And and I just I'm telling you, dude. I just remember feeling like, wow, I'm surprised. I appreciated it. 
I was like, it's a, it's a bold position. Yeah. To show your phone fumbling onto the ground, f- dropping. Everyone knows this experience is terrifying. And to show your phone in the kitchen getting, getting completely demolished and then washed in the sink. Mm-hmm. It's not just weird from the, it's not just tough from the standpoint that you got to get it past the lawyers. It's also tough from the standpoint that often brands very, uh, what would you call it? Pristine. Aspirational. You know, yeah. you, you don't normally show your thing getting beat up unless it's like an off-road vehicle or something. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, the, the way the iPhone is typically presented. Now, they did have the one ad previously where they were launching yeah. vegetables and things. But it is, it is an odd a balancing act. And I'm curious how they determine success and failure here and uh, what the motivation was. So hmm. we'll see if it ever happens again in the future. But shout out to uh, the Twitter family over there, on uh, Lou Later Twitter followers. I'm going to give you, I'm going to reply to the tweet. I'm going to go All right. reply to the tweet. Okay, you saw this Neuralink one. Get out of town, man. Get out of town, man. With the monkey and the pong with the brain. <laughs> Yes, with the brain. The brain was involved. Uh, so this monkey he has a, an early Neuralink implant. This thing is viral, this clip. Yeah, it's doing pretty well. Number right? three on trending, the tweet from Elon, Banana Town, which is especially true considering we have a monkey in this case. Two million views in 22 hours from the Neuralink channel. This is Pager, a nine-year-old. Macaw. Macaw. Monkey playing mind pong with his Neuralink implant. I mean, the way they did it was just brilliant, too. I just love this video. It's just perfect. The way he's just casually describing what the monkey is doing. So this monkey has a straw attached to a banana smoothie, which is to incentivize interaction with the video game. Mm -hmm. You do something good, Will, what do you get? Delicious smoothie. That's exactly just like life. Yes. <laughs> actions, some actions result in banana smoothie. A reward. Uh, other reactions result in getting smacked. Yeah. Falling flat on your face. Anyway, this is a banana smoothie right here. And you can see that the, the monkey is manipulating the joystick. So you're thinking to yourself, okay, you know, that's, a, that's pretty cool. It's already pretty cool to watch the, the monkey play the video game in exchange for the reward. Yeah. But then they unplug the joystick and stuff gets science fiction. The joystick no longer attached. You got to go back though. Go go back cuz you can see the joystick still on the wall but unplugged. And the so oh, the right. the monkey thinks at this point that it's still that the joystick input is still necessary. Yeah. But in reality the 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 mind the thoughts, the or I mean, they're not thoughts. The intent, the signal is being captured before it gets to the hand, mm-hmm. or at least on the way to the hand. Yes. And is being translated into these movements on the display. So the monkey thinks it's the hand input, but really, even now, all this movement is being controlled by the mind. Yeah. And he, it's a he, right? It's a he, pager. He's not even really considering the fact that he's controlling with the mind i don't know if it's a he i don't know if it's a he or she or she yeah whoever um like it's just eating smoothies (laughs) like just having fun with it you're talking about being you're you're talking about being a monkey yeah yeah it's doing its thing yeah there's no thought involved at all and here you can see there's no joystick even present and the monkey is the pong player on the right and i was watching this with you will and i was saying you know i don't even I feel like this monkey could defeat some people. Yeah. I've seen some people play games. It's not. This monkey could defeat myself, actually. Yeah. Look at this. As the, as the speed picks up. Even if it's two on one. And the smoothie's delivering at rapid pace for each successful. There's no input. The monkey's input is its brain fed through to a laptop. I like his face. Wirelessly, by the or way. His face. It's so funny. <laughs> like every time. Uh, Just playing some Pong. The smoothie gets dispensed. He's just having the time. Just playing some Pong. So the devices are connected to 2,000 tiny wires that observe neural activity inside the monkey's brain. 
uh, um, the monkey literally playing a video game telepathically using a brain chip. Real thing that actually happened. The devices were put on each side of his brain six weeks ago. He learned how to use a joystick to move the cursor. Now, the, the, the implications for this are huge, Will, because what this means is, obviously in the monkey's case, they could train using a physical joystick and an arm. Mm-hmm. Right, The monkey has access to that. But you can imagine a paralyzed individual who can't train in that fashion. They can actually still learn to control an interface with their mind, whether it's a phone or a computer. Mm -hmm. They will just have to imagine sending a signal to their arm. It's good enough. Yeah. Imagining moving will move. Yeah. And clicking, right clicking, left clicking. Imagine it. Imagine it and it shall happen. So this is, uh, I think this is a fun demonstration. Look at how they projected the uh, the jungle in the background, or at least a forest. Mm-hmm. I think that aided in 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 the feeling around the video, didn't it? Yeah, that's important, it's right? Very soft. Yeah, if that if that was just like a green screen or a regular wall, you might feel uncomfortable. Uh huh. But like, what are they doing with this one? Ex- the jungle projection was a key decision. So shout out whoever made that decision. They obviously showed off the live demo in the past with pigs as well, but man, it's getting close to humans. Mm -hmm. All right, one more thing on Tesla. They are apparently scouting new showrooms, actual physical locations in India in order to get this rollout going and get some Teslas on the road. You got to have these physical locations, uh, showrooms, still somewhat important and so apparently hmm, uh, tesla has hired an executive to lead its lobbying and business efforts ahead of its planned entry into the country this is from sources familiar sources close sources familiar with the discussions Hmm. Uh, the world's most valuable automaker by market capitalization is looking for commercial properties as large as 20,000 to 30,000 square feet to open showrooms and service centers in the capital New Delhi, financial hub Mumbai, and in the tech city Bengaluru in the south. These are three key critical locations. And they, what else are they looking to do? Separately, Tesla has recruited Manuj Kurana, a former executive of India's investment promotion body, Invest India, in the first major hire to lead its policy and business development efforts in the country. So you might be wondering, but wait, it's supposed to be a completely online experience. This is Tesla. This is the future. They're supposed to just deliver it to your house. Well, you would like to see the car physically. You would? Uh, Definitely. You wouldn't just order it up? No. I I would like to sit in a car, you know. No, no, it's fair. It's fair. I'm just, I'm curious because... I didn't the the or at least you know maybe just try it out at a dealership and then order it online. No, I know that's the way it's traditionally gone, mm-hmm. but there are obviously many many people that have just ordered Tesla sight unseen. Oh yeah, yeah yeah, uh, including myself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and actually it was the same with the Taycan. It didn't even exist yet when I ordered it. I was just like, I had I had owned a Porsche in the past. Yeah. So maybe that was helpful, but I just, I ordered that site unseen as well. Either way, what here's the important part. You're a new entrant into a market. Mm-hmm. People are curious. And one thing that struck me about that market when I was there is the amount of offline activity around smartphones. So mm-hmm. you would think, oh, all smartphone purchases, and granted, this is, I guess, a couple of years ago at this point. Mm-hmm. I was amazed how many local small little shops we're full of smartphones. All the number of individual smartphone dealers. It's still a big brick and mortar culture hmm. over there, as well as online. You have Flipkart and Amazon taking off there as well, as well as online. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's going to be important for them to have at least a certain number. And then on the fl- on on the other aspect of it, you got to have service anyway. So right. you might as well do a showroom. Yeah, you have some level of service. So anyway, be on the lookout. Those are fairly big. Properties, 20,000 to 30,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know if you saw this one, uh, this uh, Adidas Lego collaboration. Did this one cross your path? Uh, no. Yeah, this, uh, this is an unlikely collaboration. They did a collaboration with uh, Samsung. Yeah, they're all over the place. Yeah. They're making moves. Um, now, they teamed up on some less ambitious sneakers that are just kind of inspired by Lego. Mm. Uh, my kids already got one. My littlest kid got some tiny ones. Okay. This is is way more elaborate. This is an actual Lego capable Ultra Boost sneaker. Lego capable. Like that's real Lego. You can attach whatever pattern you like to it. Huh. It's it, you can connect. Hmm. So where you have your three stripes, you can do any pattern you want over there. Oh, okay. In Lego pieces. Nice. And I see at the front as well. I don't think you can clip on there. I think that's oh. more of an homage, those those uh, little oh. connector-looking things on the front. But actually, if you scroll down, scroll down, there's a little promo video. The new customizable Ultra Boost DNA X Lego plates running shoes. Those Look at nice. this. Look at this. Looks playful. Whoa. What an unlikely collaboration, though. Yeah. This is when expected. But yeah, anyway, so it's those clear pieces on the side. You can put whatever pattern you want, I guess. It's uh, compatible with any Lego piece. So you want to do like three blue stripes or you want to do combo stripes or you want to do yellow, whatever it might be. Wow. It's the, you it's, can express yourself. Yeah. Well, I'm surprised that uh, you can customize the actual stripes. Adidas don't really like the stripes to be messed with, you know? Interesting. Yeah. If you're Lego, you get to mess with the stripe. Yeah, I guess so. You mm. have the prestige. The uh, it comes with a collection of bricks when you buy it, so you don't need to bring your own bricks. BYOB, huh. that's what I like to say. Nice. Remember that famous <laughs> YouTube video with a dude who had his his uh, bricks stolen? He had his Lego stolen. Yeah, that super viral video. He says, "I'm out." He yeah. says, "I quit YouTube." Fine. The guy stole my stuff. He's crying. It's so authentic. Yeah, very sad. And and, and but people still question if it's real or not, as you would anything on the internet, mm -hmm. which is fair. Um. Anyway, you don't need to go and get your own bricks. I'm sure you could use your own, but it comes with a variety. Uh, so you can customize inside the box. The Ultra Boost DNA X Lego plates are set to go on sale Thursday, April 8th at 10 a.m. It will be on the Adidas website, 200 bucks, which sounds like a lot, but Ultra Boost shoes are already a lot. Right, yeah. So the, only thing, I, the only thing I would say about it is... One of the nice things about Ultra Boost sneakers, because I own a few of them, is that they're fairly lightweight. You start blasting Lego bricks on there. And now it's the thin style Lego plate. Mm -hmm. So, but you might have a slightly heavier package when it's all said and done. Right. Oh, how about the insole having the texture to it so you feel the Lego pieces on the sole of your foot? Yeah, like, that's like not the cool. not the Lego piece, because you don't want to step on a Lego piece. Yeah, it's like hot lava. I'm saying it has like the indents. It would be a bit of a massage. Yeah, not bad. Nice, uh, nice touch. Okay, this next one, Will. Holy cow. Did you see this clip? Miss World arrested for pulling crown from Mrs. Sri Lanka's head, allegedly causing injuries. This oh, is no. one of the weirdest clips that I've ever seen in my entire life. Really? Yes. You've seen a lot of clips. This one's Yeah, weird. I don't know. Maybe it isn't. Oh. I don't know. But it... It's it's very hard to believe that it's real. They crown this woman the champ. They put the the, the crown on there. Tiara. Tiara, whatever. And then moments later, one of the contestants gets on the microphone and says, this event is for married women only. And that woman who just won is actually divorced. And walks over to her. And starts just reaming on the crown. Uh -huh. I mean, not reaming on it, but like, obviously it's attached to the hair already at this point. Yeah. And the woman is, uh, it's a shock. Yeah. And she's removing the thing. It's embarrassing. And they give it to the runner up. After it's all said and done, the individual who had one and had it taken away presses charges saying, look, I got the injury on my head. That's assault. Wait, so the runner-up who attacked the, the runner-up runner did not attack. Oh, it was it was it was 
uh, Mrs. World, Mrs. World, whatever. I don't know what these things mean. Was the one on the microphone. She had her own crown. She won some next contest. She just happened to be at this contest from Miss Sri Lanka. Oh. So hmm. the runner up was somebody completely separate. This person appeared to have the authority to remove the crown. Oh. But it didn't change the fact that there was a certain speed. She was trying to get it off so fast. Like, you can't have that on. You didn't meet the rules. Which, by the way, there's all kinds of backlash now because they're saying, man, you can't. I don't, I don't, I don't. Like, hey, don't do that. Like, can you have a conversation after? I mean, you got to do this right now. As far, it's, and, and it's the same person who, who put it on the head, I guess, before finding out the information. So I didn't watch this video. That's the girl who yanked it. That's Mrs. Her World. And by the way, what is it? How are you having a pageant, which is married? You can't be divorced. That is a weird stipulation. But then again, Maybe I don't know anything about, thing. I don't yeah. know anything about these things. Yeah. I don't know anything about these things. This is okay now, right? She has here, her own crown. Because she's Miss World. So she's like the author authoritative. That's a Miss that's Miss World, I guess. Well, she owns the world at that point. Why is she, she not dogging do, on uh she not she, she not dogging? What it is is she is uh, uh, in, in, in an authoritative position and people are expecting her to enforce whatever rules there are. And this is where she goes for the removal. That's the runner up on the right who's crying, knowing that she's about to get this. Cry. I mean, the whole <laughs> thing is so insane. I'm watching it thinking, this, what is this? Is this, is, is this actually real? And it, it, it looks like it's actually real. Oh. She came out from the back. I don't know if she's an organizer. Oh, that's that, not her. The one that you pointed at came from the back and basically was pointing like, you gave me the wrong information and very tense scene over here and just so bizarre wow, so they just embrace the runner up they embrace there, the runner up the no other one the other backlash. one nope the other one just kind of walks off and then oh no and then uh and then here here here's a quote okay there is a rule that prevents women who have already been married and and are divorced so i am taking steps to make the crown go to second place after a brief nonviolent struggle to get the crown from De Silva's head, jur jury, that's her name, placed it on the runner up, prompting De Silva to walk off stage. That's the original winner who was divorced. Uh, anyway, she went to the police and, and lodged a complaint saying that her head was injured from the removal. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, the, the, the woman who removed it was arrested. On charges of hurt and criminal force. What? Who's, who imagined all that happening when they went to this show that evening? Or mm -hmm. when, they, when they tuned into that? Who saw that happening? They will have to appear in court on April 19th. Definitely <laughs> got way more interesting. <laughs> now, this was an important thing because this uh, it was a big deal. The uh, prime minister, this happened in Sri Lanka, by the way. The prime minister's wife was there. And this has been a huge uproar in that region, apparently. And people, at least according to this article, people are saying that the crown should be returned to De Silva, the original winner. Mm. But the crazy part about this is like, who even, how do you even decide who wins these things? What is the criteria? It's you can't be divorced. <laughs> no, I know that in this particular case, but I'm saying it's already so subjective. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what to Cultural tell you. Rules, this, maybe? this 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 was a crazy video clip for me. Yeah. It's it was it was just so surreal to watch it. You know. As they go to remove the crown and it's like a big day for that person. I like, know. Yeah. This crown means and now so everyone much. Knows that she's divorced. It's such a weird such a weird transaction. Tense situation at Miss Sri Lanka pageant. You can go yeah. uh check it out. All right, last story. Bit of a sad note, but I had to cover it. Um, we, I, I think we talked about it when he first went into the hospital. Uh, this is the latest news. DMX has passed away. Uh, this is the world-famous rapper, actor, 
by the way. And I was just kind of like reminiscing a little bit when I saw the news because I actually, I, I, I listened to a lot of DMX growing up. I know people think that might be surprising. I listened to a lot of DMX growing up. Mm-hmm. And, and I watched those movies and those music videos and, and like the Hype Williams movie, Belly. That was like, we would gather, we would gather around and watch that thing. That was an escape from this way of life. Mm-hmm. growing up around here it was a it was a glimpse into some other world you know and uh so i just went back through and 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 sort of saw what he had done and and recognized and this is how this works is something terrible happens he was 50 years old by the way but this is this is what happens you don't you you start to appreciate something maybe more when it's no longer there. Mm-hmm. And it's a weird human thing that you don't... Anyway, I'm looking into it and I see that this guy had so much success on the Billboard charts and the Wikipedia. It's mind-blowing. I believe he had five consecutive records debuting at number one. Am I crazy? Let's see if you can verify that. It was four or five. He was just so popular and reached so many people almost unexpectedly i was trying to figure out what combination of things was it that made dmx applicable to so many different groups in order to sell that many records yeah he was really big in the 90s like huge it's crazy and i mean for people who don't know for people who don't know they won't know but he also there was more to it i mean he obviously had his issues. Everybody has their issues. He had his issues. Wow, made so many movies, too. So many movies. Yeah. yeah Belly in 98. I saw Exit Wounds. Exit Wounds. Yeah. Wow. He did a lot Did a lot of work. Didn't always go according to plan. But the other piece I just wanted to put on it was, like, he had a religious side to him. He had a... uh an introspective aspect he you can go watch interviews and and see that there was conflict you know he was uh there was just there was just more to him there's just more to it and he he would put certain songs on the record like uh that that he would just say a prayer Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember that. And some people had said he should have been a preacher because of the way he would deliver things. And I mean, it's hard to know. I don't know what, I don't know what you're supposed to say at a, at, a, at, a, at a moment like that, but it seems significant. Like you want to, you want to mention it. You want to talk about it. I found myself this morning just uh, perusing, like browsing some of the different work there and reminiscing a little bit Mm -hmm. and searching for you know just trying to see what he what what, what he was going through because again as a youngster you're not really looking at it like that like when I was listening to DMX it was kind of superficial in a way you just take it you just listen to it it was the music you put on yeah and Maybe you you don't run the whole comprehensive analysis of the individual and the whole picture mm-hmm. of the landscape of what it's like to live that life. And it's obvious to me as an adult looking back at it now and seeing some of the relationships he had or didn't have with his kids and his own upbringing. And th- th- these are some complex things. Yeah. Well, and, and it turns out that the music business is not, it's not easy on everybody or the media business or whatever you want to call it. It's not easy on everybody. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but anyway, if, uh, if you didn't know him, you can go check out some of the stuff he did. And, and if you did, well, then you already know, um, rest in peace. Rest in peace.